Grab some bacon on a biscuit and let's go. We're burning daylight. Welcome to the Frontier Freedom Hour with Jeff Hunt. Sponsored by Centennial Institute at Colorado Christian University. Now, here's Jeff Hunt. Friends, welcome back to another great week of the Frontier Freedom Hour. Sponsored by the Centennial Institute at Colorado Christian University. Running the board for us is Michael Geronimo Arpaio. I used to call him Deadshot because he gets it done the first time. We love our partnership with Salem Media. So great to be with you all. All right, we're going to cover two major issues on this week's show. We're going to start with Andy Bunn of Child Evangelism Fellowship. We're going to talk about how families in the military are doing and kind of cover some of these ministries that are doing care and support to families that are serving. This is really, really important, guys, for the health of our country, for the proclamation of the gospel, and so we're going to dive into that later. Second half of the show, Nicole Hunt of Focus on the Family, we're going to dive in there to what happened in Ohio, the ballot initiative, and how do pro-lifers respond. It seems like we're losing over and over and over again when it comes to pro-life ballot initiatives. So what did we learn from Ohio, and what's the strategy moving forward? So a great show. You're going to want to tune into the entire thing. All right, Andy Bunn, Director of Military Children's Ministry for Child Evangelism Fellowship. Thanks so much for being on the show. I love the work that you're doing to care for military families. So give us an overview. What does Child Evangelism Fellowship do for military families? Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much uh, for having me and giving me the opportunity to share uh, about Child Evangelism Fellowship and what uh, the military children's ministry uh, arm of the ministry does is my role is I'm a facilitator and we have local directors uh, throughout the United States that have military bases within their realm of responsibility and when they want to take ministry to children on bases, uh, they contact me, and I'm a bridge to link them uh, with chaplain teams on base, and then we try to have face-to-face meetings and, and partner for ministry to elementary school children through our Good News Clubs. So what's a Good News Club? A uh, Good News Club is one of the three uh, things that we do at Child Evangelism, excuse me, Child Evangelism Fellowship, and that is it's uh, about an hour and a half long conducted after school in which we share uh, the gospel with children. Uh, we have uh, we teach them a Bible verse, share a Bible story. We have games and snacks. Kids love snacks. And we give them an opportunity to uh, profess faith in Jesus. Amen. You know, some things have never changed since I was doing youth ministry many years ago. Pizza. It always works. It's like a <laughs> God-given send to just pull kids in. Uh, get good food and good snacks, and it seems like it continues. So tell us, uh, how many uh, bases are you on? How many children are you ministering to on these bases? Uh, right now, we are on 16 bases Fantastic. in the United States and uh, 13 different states, and we are praying to be on four more uh, by the end of the year with what we uh, refer to as Christmas party clubs, which is another uh, aspect of how we minister to children uh, a party club is a one-day event that uh, is tied to a, a holiday during the year, and we do the same thing at but one time based on that holiday, share a Bible story, uh, teach them a Bible verse, share the gospel with them, and give them an opportunity uh, to, uh, to come to know Christ as their Savior. I love how direct it is. We all know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and you're offering it to these kids. Uh, What are you seeing uniquely with these kids? Uh, The the experience that they have is so different than what a a kid just kind of going to a traditional brick-and-mortar school in their neighborhood every day experiences. These kids are moving around. Some of these kids have lost parents um, in the military. Their experience is very unique. Tell us about that. Uh, yes, it is. Um, I was uh, in the Army um, a long time ago, <laughs> in the 80s and 90s. And and back then you had uh, Desert Storm and some other things that occurred. And we deployed, but moved forward uh, 
three decades, and what you have now is total uncertainty mm. among families in the military in that uh, mom and dad can be here on Monday and deployed uh, the very next day because of all the different turmoil and things going on in the world. And so children, although they regularly move every two to three years as a part of a military family, they also have this additional uh, tug on them of total uncertainty as to where mom and dad will be from day to day because of the uh, continual uh, deployments and things going on that they must uh, serve their country for. And so is the goal that you can provide a little bit of certainty with this? Like you you go to any military base and you guys are going to be there to support them. They're going to have that chance to connect with child evangelism fellowship on different bases. It's a little bit of a, of a consistency in their lives. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what we want to do. We want to um, provide a good news club, which meets once a week during the school year and gives them something that they can count on with a team of uh, volunteer leaders who love the Lord, who love children, who love sharing the gospel. And that way the, the children can look forward to every week, whatever day of the week uh, that they meet, that they will uh, see these volunteers, uh, hear God's word, have a good fellowship together with snacks and games, and just enjoy a great time in the Lord together. Talking with Andy Bunn, Director of Military Children's Ministry for Child Evangelism Fellowship. How old are these kids? What's the age range? Uh, elementary school children primarily, uh, K through uh, 5, uh, sometimes 6th grade. And uh, and that is what we've been doing since 1937. Wow. With elementary school children. How did this get started? The founder... Um, Mr. O, uh, Oberholzer, as we uh, uh, fondly call him, he uh, wanted to take uh, the gospel to children. And what's interesting is that he initially didn't think children could grasp the gospel. And so he did an experiment uh, when he heard uh, someone say that children could. And sure enough, the Lord changed his heart. And he uh, got a zeal for sharing the gospel with children. And in 1937, uh, Child Evangelism Fellowship was officially founded uh, by him. And since that time, uh, millions of children have heard the gospel throughout the world. Uh, And because his goal was to be in every country in the world. Hmm. And we are almost there. That's fantastic. Well, you know these kids won't hear it in government-run schools, uh, unfortunately. And so you have to have these organizations, these ministries that are outreaching and doing this work. Child Evangelism Fellowship, its mission to reach every child, every nation, every day. They train and equip hundreds of thousands of teachers around the world to reach children for His glory. Isn't that great? So we're talking with Andy Bun, the director of military children's ministry. You said you served as well. Were you jumping out of airplanes for Ronald Reagan? Was that when your years of service took place? (laughs) Actually, um, I I jumped out of a perfectly good airplane five times, just enough to get my wings. But I was actually a M1 A1 tanker. (laughs) I got to serve on tanks. That's great. That is great. And uh, where did you where did you serve? Where did they put you in this world? I started out at uh, Fort Polk, Louisiana, and then I served um, in uh, Germany uh, for three years. And from Germany, the unit I was with deployed to Kuwait for a few months uh, in the uh, early nineties. That's great. I, Go ahead. Did you have something else you wanted? I, I finished up uh, my last. Uh, tour was I uh, taught uh, ROTC at Virginia Tech and Radford University in Virginia. That's fantastic. Preparing the next generation. Well, I I was recently with some chaplains at Fort Caveos, uh, used to be formerly Fort Hood. And what a lot of people don't know about the military is that um, all, all these ministries kind of, even if they're not directly associated, you know, kind of put on by the army, they open the door for ministries because they've, they've got to serve their soldiers and soldiers take their faith in God seriously. They, you know, lots of different faiths within the military, but um, 
they, they allow minist- churches to come on to the military bases to do service. And that's kind of what it sounds like this program is, Child Evangelism Fellowship. You guys aren't officially part of the military, but the military allows you all to serve the children on these bases. Is that correct? Correct. What we uh, want to do is link up our local director uh, with the chaplain team on basis such that they can uh, begin a partnership such that not only can we uh, fulfill our mission of sharing the gospel with elementary uh, school children, but such that we can also come alongside the chaplains and their teams uh, to assist them in serving families in, in whatever way they see fit. And Fort Cavazos happens to be one of the places that uh, Child Evangelism Fellowship Military Children's Ministry is thriving. Fantastic. And, and, and thankfully, we have a great team there with uh, some wonderful chaplains uh, who are serving uh, in the schools there on, on base and in uh, many other uh, venues at Fort Cavazos. Talking with Andy Bunn, Director of Military Children's Ministry for Child Evangelism Fellowship. When we come back, I'm going to ask him about how families in the military are doing. You've probably all seen the headlines about the suicide rate, not only of active duty soldiers, but of veterans as well. This is a national crisis. These are people that have stepped up. They're the best of the best that our country can produce. And they are defending our country. And then when you see those types of headlines that uh, people aren't doing well, that our soldiers and veterans are not doing well, that is an emergency that we need to rush to address. So we'll talk about that and more when we return. Friends, you're listening to the Frontier Freedom Hour, sponsored by the Centennial Institute at Colorado Christian University. We'll be right back.